Um, let's chat to Ipswich MP Tom Hunt. Tom, good morning. Good morning. Uh, a- Amy told us that she's been <coughs> in, in, in touch with, with yourself, as have uh, many other residents at the mill. Um, what have residents been telling you? Well, I mean, I, I mean, I, for the last four or five months, maybe six months, I mean, I've, I've been meeting um, every week or at least every fortnight um, with, with residents. Um, they're, they're all invited and um, the numbers vary, but I've been, I've been meeting with them very frequently. So I, I'm very aware of the stress that it's causing them. Uh, it, it's an incredibly complex issue, complex problem. Uh, but one thing's for sure is that none of none of the leaseholders to, are to blame for what's happened. So none of them should really have to, you know, be going through this or, or have to pay anything at all for 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 what are mistakes made by the original developer. Um, I do feel that I do feel perhaps more hopeful now than I did a few months ago. I think that we we've got an application into the building safety fund at the moment, which if, if successful will provide uh, a lot of the money to deal with the cladding issues. There's also a report into the external walls, which is going to be completed any moment. Now, once that's completed, we'll know for the first time exactly how much it's going to cost to sort out all the problems. And that includes both the cladding problems and the structural problems. Um, so I think that would put us in a better, better position. Um, I, I agree that it is that the situation of the administrator uh, and you know, money running out is is a concern. But I'm but it's only just recently that they've said that they'll be staying into the second quarter of 2024. And I think that that will hopefully carry on happening until we get this resolved. And there is also some interest from uh, private companies who are interested in taking on a freehold, which ultimately um, I think would be the best outcome. So it, incredibly frustrating that this hasn't been resolved yet. But behind the scenes, I, I, I'm I'm more hopeful now than I was a few few months ago that we are actually slowly heading in the right direction. What are you doing to try and help Tom? Well, I mean, all of those things. So, I mean, I mean, I think that those weekly meetings I have with the residents, um, in addition to that, I'm in constant contact with the Department for Leveling Up and Local Government. In fact, I actually went on to the Select Committee for, for, for that department to give me more of a platform to campaign on this issue. Um, I've raised it in Prime Minister's questions with the Prime Minister directly in a, in a very high profile way. In addition to that, I've had you know frequent discussions with RSM, the administrator, about um, trying to get them to commit to staying as long as they need to stay for this to be resolved. I mean, only uh, I think sort of four or five months ago, they'd started the liqu- liquidation process. That was put on pause and now they've committed to the second quarter of 2024. Uh, and also, there's, I'm, I've had some engagement with, um, I've been approached by some uh, private companies that may be interested in taking on the freehold. So, I mean, I have I've dedicated one member of my team to work almost exclusively on this issue. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've, I've, I've done everything I can to support my constituents at the mill. What um, was, what was the Prime Minister's reaction? How, how did he respond to your question? Well, actually, what I raised with the Prime Minister was something which I think is disgraceful. Uh, which is that there was actually an out-of-court settlement uh, a while ago now uh, where a significant amount of money was was given over to the mill uh, to make a significant contribution towards dealing with some of the issues at the mill. At the time, the creditor for the uh, the bill, NAMA, which is an, uh, was set up by the Irish government um, after the Irish banking crisis, mm. basically took the money, ran off with it. What um, are the... So, so it's, what other concerns, then, other than that, what other concerns do you have about what's been going on at the mill? Well, I mean, it, it's the problem. The, the issue we've got in Ipswich is we've had a, we've had a whole load of buildings that were given approval um, by the by the you know sort of the planning department at Ipswich Borough Council that should never have been given approval. They were never safe. They were ne- they never met the regulations. Um, and I think it's disgraceful that this was allowed to happen. I think it's disgraceful that the developers, Lang or Rock in this case, have seemed to have really gotten away with what they did. And it's you know they're off doing other things. And it's and it's my constituents, the leaseholders, who you know, as Amy said, you know, bought their property in good faith, saved a deposit, etc., did all the right things, all the things that society tells them they ought to do to get on. And ultimately, they're the ones stuck in limbo. There's a great immorality that goes to the heart of this issue but ultimately um when this report on the external walls is completed i mean it should have actually been published in january I, I, i'm slightly at a loss as to why it's you know we're into march we're still waiting for it when that is published we'll know for the first time 
or we'll be close to knowing for the first time exactly how much all this work is going to kind of cost. Okay. Um, I, that, I, I, Tom, ad administrators have, have, have funding into the, the second quarter. Um, what's yeah. that money going to be used for, do you think? Should that be starting to be used for repairs? No, it, it, the, the money the money is used for the waking watch, um, which is and, and just the running costs of you know, keeping the building operational, so people right. can live there. Ultimately, the money the money that we need for the cladding and structural problems at the mill, um, you know, a, a, as I think has been quoted, is could we don't know for sure what the exact amount would be, but it, it could well be in the region of about thirty million pounds. You know, that would need to be a dedicated fund to deal with the the issues. Um, yeah. You said earlier in our conversation that you were more hopeful than, than you have been previously. Uh, you mentioned some of the reasons why. How do you think this is going to end? What, what, can you see it reaching a climax? Um, yes, I can. So I think the government, um, the gov this, is a, this is a very complex and unique case for Mill. Um, I think the government at a senior level are very aware of this and committed to trying to come up with a solution. So that gives me hope. And I've been into the department. I've had those conversations. Um, what do I want to happen? I, I want the money uh, to be to be found to, to comprehensively resolve all of these cladding and structural problems. And you're, and and you're, hope, hope, you're hopeful that will happen? I think the building safety application will be successful. Yes, I, I do think that we'll we, eventually we will get the money to sort out the problems. When, when, will, I, that, I think, when will that be, Tom? Because there's, there's hundreds of people yeah. um, not knowing whether right. or not they're going to be homeless. And I, and I think I've given you an indication that I share that concern and I am doing absolutely everything I can to give them their assurances. The building safety application, the building safety fund application, which is hopefully going to cover some of the cladding costs is currently in, we need that report and the external walls done. I think that, but, but when, ultimately... When are we what, expecting what the conclusion of the report then? And when, when do you think well, you can give I the, think, the I residents think the, some the, assurances? I think the best, per, you know, that is a question that I'm repeatedly asking RSM about the external walls report, which should have been published at the end of January. And they still haven't, they still haven't, they still haven't um, published it. And I'm also trying to make sure when it is published, all of the leaseholders get a full report with all the details about the building that they live in because there's still uncertainty about why their building is unsafe so a lot of the, a lot of my constituents are living they're not living in the tower of course but they don't actually a lot of them are just sort of guessing as to what it is about their property that makes it unsafe the good thing about this report it will finally make all of that clear um but i think ultimately this i don't want to get to a situation i don't want to get to a situation where the administrator minister the administrator just runs out of money in that circumstance the freehold would go to the crown, to the government. Okay. But before that point, I want to, I want there to be a new developer to come in and purchase a freehold and to lead the process of you know, sorting out all these repairs. So this, this report seems pretty crucial, and it's already a couple of months behind. Will, will you be chasing yeah. that up? Um, I chase it up all the time. Uh, all the time I'm chasing this up. Every every week, um, you know, every fortnight, I'm meeting with my constituents. This is a this is a huge priority, and I, I and I do think I know it doesn't it might not feel like it. We've, st we've still got a long way to go, but I do think that some things have happened over the last few months that make me more hopeful that we we, we can get to a point where this can be resolved. But it's been it should never have taken as long as it's taken, uh, and it's um, but but I I do think we'll get there. I do think we'll get there. And, I, and, I, and, I, and actually, those constituents that I meet with on a fortnightly basis, I, I have noticed over the last um, you know, few months that I, I think a lot of them feel they sense that it is nudging in the right direction from the constituents that I've met with directly. Well, it certainly seems unfair and unjust what, what has happened, certainly it from, is. From, from the outside. Again, Tom, I have to ask, this resolution you keep talking about, um, I, have to, I have to say again, when will it be in the spring? Will it be the summer or later, the back end of the year? Do you have any, any idea? I'm not in a position to tell you that um, because there's, there's so many things that need to happen. The report into the external walls needs to be, needs to be completed. Um, we need to get certainty around what the issues are, how much it's going to cost. And ultimately, I think we need to have a new freeholder. We need to have, and, and there, there is interest. There are, there are companies, there are individuals who are interested in taking on the freehold of a mill. That would be the best outcome. What I don't want to happen is just the administrator to run out of money, there to be technically no freeholder, and then it just sort of goes to the crown, goes to the government. I, I, I must add, though, that there are some examples of that happening. Yeah. There are three how, how examples of that happening in London. How many freeholders and, have expressed an interest? Um, there's two that there's two that I know of who have. 
OK. Listen, let, let us know what goes on with this, Tom. We'll, we'll keep across it and get you back on, maybe. Well, thank you for, cov- thank you for covering it. And uh, the more coverage we get on this, the better, because it, it creates pressure on a lot of the people involved. And, I, and I, I would actively promote this getting more and more coverage. Tom Hunt, MP for Ipswich. Uh, hopefully that's uh, helped a little bit. If you are one of the, the many residents um, who own properties in the mill, um, I think the important thing is getting that, that, that report and seeing that, that report and getting it published. Um, we'll keep you up to date on this story. We'll keep our eyes across it, certainly.